In early 1971, the presidential campaign for a little-known U.S. senator from South Dakota was in search of a path to the nomination. The traditional route passed through New Hampshire, and that year's early favorite to hoist the Democratic Party banner? We were up against a front-runner named Ed Muskie from the adjoining state of Maine, and Senator Muskie was leading in the polls and was very well known in New Hampshire. So we had a conversation. There were just about six of us at that time. During that fateful planning session, advisor Richard Stearns began ticking off key primaries favorable to McGovern. Campaign manager Gary Hart was searching for a game changer. And so I said to him, Rick, is there any state that begins the nomination process before New Hampshire? He said, well, there are caucuses in Iowa, but no one has paid much attention to them. I said, we're going to pay attention to them. Well, Gary Hart was terrific as a campaign manager. I'm not at all sure I would have won that nomination without that great grassroots organization that uh, Gary built. McGovern's time on Iowa soil was meager by the standard set by dozens of politicians only years later. You know, when you're out there, it's kind of lonely. You're walking around looking for somebody to shake hands with. In Iowa, even a junior senator from South Dakota with very little money had a chance. Stockbroker Lonnie Birma and his wife Pei, both supporters of George McGovern, trying hard to understand the mechanics of the reform rules, which some had thought would require a PhD in math. But I don't think any other campaign really understood how doing well in Iowa before New Hampshire could reposition candidates, and George McGovern was very low in the polls. Eight o'clock, 45-15, Wakanda Parkway, Des Moines, Iowa. Democratic voters in this middle-income 87th precinct are coming to the home of Mrs. Ellen Sissio, here to begin the four-month-long procedure of selecting delegates to the National Democratic Convention. On caucus night 1972, McGovern, considered a long shot to even contend for his party's nomination, placed second behind national frontrunner Muskie. We didn't fully realize it until we saw the news coverage on the results. A dozen reporters were alongside Iowa Democratic Party staffer Richard Bender, ready to file for the night. One of those dozen reporters or so was Johnny Apple of the New York Times, who wrote a big story in the New York Times, which was picked up by the, the national uh, TV folks. And it was a big deal. But we didn't, you know, before that, we had no idea this, you know, it would happen. It was the first time that a headline from a election appeared with me in the subhead saying George McGovern came in a strong second. McGovern would use the Iowa momentum and Muskie's own mistakes to claim the 1972 Democratic nomination. He would ultimately lose to President Richard Nixon in an epic landslide, but the seeds of an Iowa caucus moment had been sown for the next man in. <laughs>